A lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is still putting on its shoes. This quote is often credited to Mark Twain, but that attribution is most likely inaccurate, though the calculation seems an apt description of our age, which has been referred to as a post-truth era. And once a person accepts something to be true, it's very difficult to persuade them otherwise. You are listening to The Why Factor on the BBC World Service. I'm Sandra Canthal, and as part of the Beyond Fake News season, I'll be asking, why is it easier to fool someone than to convince them that they've been fooled? Psychologists know that if you're told something is true by someone in a position of authority, like a university lecturer, you're more likely to believe it. This is a tactic that's as applicable on the magician's stage as the politician's podium. It allows conjurers of all sorts to guide our attention towards the things they want us to see. This manoeuvre is called misdirection. Part of misdirection relies on the fact that we simply can't process all of the information that is out there. And so rather than processing all of the information, our attentional systems systematically just select parts that we are interested in. And I think a similar process is happening now with social media, whereby we are bombarded with vast amounts of information, much more so than we did in the past. And given that there's so much information out there, it becomes much more easy to actually manipulate the information that people are actually attending to. And this is important when considering cognitive shortcuts, like confirmation bias, the tendency we have to seek out information which confirms what we already believe is true. If you've got a theory, people tend to seek out information that confirms that theory rather than that could potentially reject it. And a lot of these cognitive biases are incredibly powerful and they ex certainly explain to a certain extent why people stick to theories that the outside world would consider to be potentially crazy or even impossible. My name is Karen B. I have a YouTube channel. I am a mom. I have three children. I live in North Carolina. Graphic design and printing is my background. And now I am a independent scientific researcher. I was researching various things, the financial system and government and that sort of thing and then it moved on to the medical system vaccines and various other things and then i started to realize that what was being pushed as scientific fact was not fact it was propaganda opinion <laughs> and how did you get interested in the shape of the earth well because i saw somebody posting about flat earth they showed up in my facebook feed and I saw it and I thought it was really ridiculous so I thought well first I'm gonna watch this video and I'm going to explain to this person why they are wrong and so I watched the video I thought it would be funny and then at the end of the video I thought well that's not really funny <laughs> and they actually have some valid points so I started to look into it myself and tried to debunk the video that I watched and I couldn't do it Karen grew up in Northern California. After graduating from high school, she earned a university degree in multimedia and communication. Her belief that the Earth is flat is not just based on what she's seen on the internet. She and her fellow independent researchers have gone to some lengths to investigate their theory. We did a series of tests with a high-powered laser where we went to large bodies of water and we shot the laser over Lake Balaton in Hungary, over Lake Isil in the Netherlands. And in both cases, we were able to see the source of the light that should have been hidden behind the curve of the Earth if you use the math of the finite size of Earth that they give you. So while it's not necessarily proof that the Earth is flat, it's pretty solid evidence that at the very least, the Earth is not the size and shape that they tell us. I put to Karen some of the questions that are probably jumping out at you, too. How do you explain the photographs from space? The pictures of Earth aren't actually pictures. NASA themselves admit that those are all composite images from a database. 
right? So they just take, you know, strips of pictures from their, you know, satellites, so-called satellites, <laughs> which actually I think are just high-altitude balloons, and then they're piecing together and forming them around a sphere. They're creating these pictures. So there actually aren't any photos of Earth. Where do ships go when they sail over the horizon? So what happens to ships is they actually just go out of view. They just get so far that their angular size is too small to discern by your human eye. So they're not going off the edge or they're not going over the curve. They're just disappearing out of view. And the big one, gravity. Gravity is another thing that they don't have any proof for. It's a theory, right? So they don't, they don't have proof that there is gravity. Gravitational force between two objects is equal to the product of their masses multiplied by the gravitational constant and divided by the square of the distance between them. This is Isaac Newton's law of universal gravitation, an almost, in this case, universally accepted formula for calculating the force of gravity. That, and you can drop your own apple and see what happens. And NASA does acknowledge that it makes composite photographs, but those are all pictures of the planet Earth taken at different angles, owing to the positioning of their satellites, one of which is a million miles away and clearly shows the circular shape of the planet in one image. Why do you think that we're all still taught that the Earth is round? Well, because think about all the things that sort of depend on that. If you change the shape of the Earth and you change our cosmology, it affects literally everything, right? So you have people in the place of authority teaching you this is a fact, and then it turns out that it's not a fact. Well, then all your universities come into question, your educational system, government, everything. And then you find out that you're wrong, but you've built this whole system based on it. I mean, are you going to tell anybody? They'd give up their power immediately. You've been listening to The Why Factor on the BBC World Service. I'm Sandra Canthal. The producer was Chris Browning, the editor was Andrew Smith, and it was mixed by James Beard. If you like this program, you may be interested in other editions of this series, which focus on unconscious bias, confessions, or conspiracy theories. You can find them at bbc.com slash whyfactor. <laughs>